love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I'm Namaste friends um, this is Prasanna Krishna Sharma so in today's lecture we'll be continuing about blockchain in the previous lecture we saw what a blockchain is what an immutable record is and in today's lecture we'll be seeing little more a little bit more in deep of this great technology let's take a deep dive Namaste friends so today what we're going to seeing is blockchain uh, in our digital technologies lesson number 2 so in the previous lecture we actually saw what a blockchain is what an immutable technology is and how the blockchains are actually worked so now actually let's take a little bit step further and let's actually see where all it is being used okay so today's agenda will be what are the blockchain uses what is a centralized architecture what is a decentralized architecture what are the pros and cons of a blockchain or in other words what are the advantages and disadvantages of a blockchain and like always you can actually contact me with the information given below now let's actually get into the lecture so the blockchain uses basically you can almost use it on a day to day life okay like say suppose if you're actually transferring money and something that we all know in today's day and age cryptocurrency cryptocurrency crypto coin bitcoin let me tell you one thing the bitcoin is built on blockchain technology bitcoin is not blockchain technology all right and needless to say we know that we can actually record any kind of non monetary transaction whether it is monetary which is involving cash or something which is non monetary which is not involving cash this can be to update your medical records uh in order to transfer your title lease title rent uh you know your will property anything of that nature and certification or say suppose i issue a certificate telling that you guys are certified in blockchain i can't fake it right so you know so that a genuine should be there so that i can actually give so the brand name is good then it becomes good so all these things are immutable okay so what does it mean blockchains can be used where you can actually the events are actionable okay you can also use in a smart contract okay you can actually allow a blockchain to take actions on events or a transaction you can say once this thing has actually happened do this okay Uh, or in other words now say suppose i smart contract now say suppose i raise an invoice to you okay and i say uh, say may 1st i'm actually raising you an invoice and i say like this is due by uh, june 15th okay so what the smart contract will do is it will actually understand and it will actually send you a reminder on june 10th now say suppose if i don't receive your money by june 15th it'll actually calculate the days and actually put a late fee and actually smartly contra it smartly calculate and actually send you a new revised invoice okay how cool is that uh you know i there are many other ways even like the house temperature there are many other ways you can actually use a blockchain towards the same and you know we will be seeing more and more the blockchain in healthcare technologies in healthcare industries the iots uh you know we'll be seeing so you know the smart contract you know just remember you know this at a high level also the blockchain is mainly used in financial contracts manufacturing supply chain i mean supply chain right now is a huge demand and if you actually put a blockchain it is outstanding uh, powerful quality tracking uh, international mon- money transaction so you know depending upon which part of the world you are and in what status now say suppose if you are uh, if you actually move to a different foreign country for work purposes uh, you know or for any you know anything people usually send money to your home you know for your parents okay so taking care of your parents um you know so that transaction there is always a middleman and the middleman takes a lot of money with this blockchain if you can actually remove the middleman your your pers- your parents old age parents will get lot more money or your friends your kids you know for school purposes for any purposes the money is lot more the value is lot more okay so these are some of the uses of a blockchain now let's actually see before going to centralized architecture let me actually give you two cases 
which actually made me feel so, that I, I need to do something in blockchain. Case number one, I know a person, you know, from my childhood who was actually saving a lot of money towards his retirement. So with all his hard earned money, he actually bought a piece of land. I can't say the place, but some way. Okay, so what happened was he was thinking on the piece of land. He bought a you know, plot of land, so it is not a building. So he was always thinking that the, the plot of land is there and he can actually use it for his retirement purposes. Now, he had two kids. Uh, they were married and, you know, he was actually saving it for his retirement. So when the final day came, there was some a family emergency. So he immediately thought, OK, I do have this plot of land and I can actually use it for this purpose. Guess what happened when he actually went to the registrar's office? They said, sir, in the same thing, we at least have like, you know, five plots registered. So this person, his lifelong dream got shattered in a matter of seconds because of some person's greediness. And also another case here is, you know, uh, you know, I, I know this person, you know, where like, you know, they wanted the kid to go abroad and study. And, uh, you know, because to be competitive and, you know, uh, you know, and then and then they left it to the kid's choice, whether they want to come back to the home home country or whether to, you know, lead a life abroad. So you need to have enough supplies in terms of money supplies and you need to have a relaxed atmosphere. You can't come on a loan. You can't be on a pressure, even though many persons do that. But there is a lot of pressure. OK, from right, right from day number one. So this person had their house in in, in a metropolitan area. And they were thinking, okay, you know, so they are good parents, right? So after now it is all for my kid. So they wanted to actually, you know, sell that piece of land. So some development, redevelopment person actually came and then he actually bought that house. And then what he has actually done was he has actually sold the house for five different persons. So he says, if you want to jail me, jail me, you know, I'm not going to give you the money. So, you know, um, so again, you know, they were, the parents are actually feeling miserable that they're not able to send their kid for higher education and for their, their future. The kid is feeling miserable that, you know, they're not able to progress. It is because of one person's greediness. Society has to be fair, transparent, where any person can grow. Okay, so greediness, you know, you can actually have it in some areas, but not at the cost of other person's life and ambition. Okay, so, you know, blockchain, that is why I'm a big prop, you know, big fan and very passionate of blockchain technologies. Now, let's see what a centralized architecture is, a decentralized architecture where they're actually using. So the centralized architecture, let me actually, you know, give you a very good example. Now, say, suppose you're a family of four, okay, father, mother, two kids. So, you know, depending upon whether it's a patriarchal or a matriarchal, whether your father makes a decision or your mother makes a decision, they know how much money they have, what is the school fees, what is the monthly grocery, um, you know, what, what, what it actually takes. Okay. So now say, suppose, and say, suppose some festival is actually coming that one person who's actually in charge makes a decision depending upon that month's budget, telling that, Hey kids, listen, this month we can't go out for movies. Okay. Uh, because we are running short of budget. So when one person is actually the authority and they're taking the decision and when everybody is actually agreeing to it, it is called as a centralized system, a centralized architecture where it's a single point of decision making. OK, and they have the control over the entire network. You can apply this across. So if you're coming from India, there's a central government, which is the main in charge. And we also have state governments, but the national highways is all built by the central government. So the central government's decision. So, you know, you can you can actually apply the centralized architecture in this manner and what it means in this simple layman's term. Now, this is a centralized architecture. See how it is. This is one person who actually decides everything and these are nodes. OK, everything here. So this is a centralized architecture. Now, what are the examples of centralized architecture? Any kind of online application such as Facebook, Twitter, Quora are examples of centralized architecture. Facebook, there is only one person who makes a decision. And, you know, that person really drives it. Now, let's actually come to a decentralized architecture. Now, remember last time in last video, I told you uh, I actually buy a piece of land and the computer nodes validates across the globe and it becomes you know, transaction is actually made and it becomes immutable. So that is an example of decentralized. OK, in decentralized, there is no single point of failure and there is no one person who makes a decision. OK, the all the information is constantly replicated to all the sites of the network. 
some transaction happens here it has been replicated here 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 so these are nodes okay so this is the beauty of a decentralized architecture it is not a single point of failure now see this is exactly what i said something is happening here it gets replicated in all these area the nodes actually validate and you know so it is kind of foolproof and it's not a single point architecture now the examples of you know decentralized architecture is blockchain and in blockchain they actually built bitcoin and ethereum okay these are decentralized and there is no single point of failure now what are the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of blockchain as of today well these are the areas where blockchain actually wins it is decentralized so there is no centralized contract uh, in a, a control now say suppose you don't like your mom's decision or your dad's decision even though this can be good or bad now in a small number it is okay okay but when it comes to a bigger number you feel miserable okay you feel like your voice is not heard okay so blockchain it actually wins there because it's decentralized it's like hey you know what i have it i drive it you know everything becomes like a small small you know group of teams and you know you actually get your way and it is good it is fully distributed and highly fault tolerant and there is no double spending which means there is no duplicates and there is very low transaction cost and as i always say it is immutable 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 which means you can't change 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 or tamper proof like what happened in the sad examples that i actually gave you okay now what are the current drawbacks of a blockchain the the technology is kind of new so it is slow to adopt okay and blockchain as a service is very expensive there are not that many skilled resources which means if you guys actually study and work hard you have a lot of job opportunities in the coming in the coming years the speed and scalability is a concern okay uh, so a credit card transaction that we are all aware of is at least 75000s per second okay per second or per, per minute and I'll, i'll get you the right figure whereas a blockchain is only like 15 to 30 so this is where the cryptocurrency if you see they coming with a different concept of proof of work and proof of stake they're actually trying to improve the transactions and with technology coming in the future like quantum computing and what not i think we are only going to have some better days okay um and you know in the blockchain since all the nodes should validate the you know validate the transaction the power consumption like say like this transaction happens here this should validate this should validate this should validate and the entire thing should validate the power consumption is high so let me give you an example the total power consumption of bitcoin is more than that the total power consumption of the entire country of ireland okay so when and when we are actually thinking of going green imagine the fossil fuels and other things okay also take that into consideration okay and always i'm always reachable you know in linkedin or in, or on my blog spot feel free to drop me a note or ask me a question i'll be there too i'll be very happy to answer thank you guys cheers namaste friends i trust you might have actually liked my lecture if not please leave me your comments valuable comments i will try my level best to actually improve the quality and you know based upon your feedback so what did we actually learn today the power of blockchain and you know the 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 advantages and disadvantages and how blockchain can be implemented in a society to make it transparent uh let's actually take it in the same manner and let's actually cover concepts by concepts uh in order to understand this great digital technology like always i want to thank you for giving me your time and watching this video and my wife jayashree for allowing me to follow my passion and uh, you know and 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 do the same so thank you guys till we see you for the next time cheers take care bye Thank <laughs> you.